Uh, thank you. So um, I'm going to commit several cardinal sins. The, the, the first one is this talk is neither technical nor geeky. Um, so you, you, you can all, those who want a technical and geeky talk, this is not the place. Um, I'll also have lots of pointers in it, so that's even worse, uh, heretic. And I'll, I'll explain those later on. Um, so, but think of this talk as going back to, to Simon's comments this morning. Uh, think of this as talk as about a hut. It's a hut not in a pioneer museum, but a hut full of interesting tools that you might find useful. And, and my job here is just explain a bit about some of the tools you might find in our hut. And our hut is called Prowess, and that stands for Property-Based Testing uh, for Web Services. Um, so it is an EU project, and it's an, an interesting EU project. So there's, there's a, a double whammy, as we say, in the UK. Um, what's, what's its aim? Well, its aim is to improve testing, particularly for web services, through uptake and use of property-based testing. Uh, and, and we'll say a bit, bit more about that later. Um, and it, it's, uh, I'll talk quite a lot about an ecosystem, that in a sense that's the spine of the hub, of the hut that, that, that we're living in, and that's a tool, quick check, you, you probably all know about property-based testing. Um, so that allows us to test systems uh, and services in different languages, uh, LANG, Java, C, and so forth. Uh, but the, the system models and properties, if you want an Erlang grounded, they're, they're all written in Erlang. Okay. So there, there's a bunch of us have been involved for the um, for the last three years or so, or so. I'm from the University of Sheffield. Uh, as as Henry said, my name's John Derrick, um, and, and this is a consortium. And the product, these slides, why well, I didn't put my name on the front, they're very much a product of the whole consortium's efforts. And, and in fact, many of the pictures have been developed by by Simon at the at the back. So credit credit goes where where that should lie. Um, so this is an air, uh, an Erlang ecosystem that we were trying to further uh, and develop. Um, we had some existing parts of the, air uh, of the ecosystem in place already. Uh, so qu the tools, quick check, Wrangler refactoring tool, um, mega load um, for, for, for load testing. Uh, in essence, one of the things we were trying to do uh, was to expand uh, that ecosystem. So move from, from that picture uh, to, to this sort of picture. Okay, so we're populating uh, the space. Some of we're populating the Erlang space with, with tools which are specifically designed uh, for Erlang, some, some for Java, some even working on C, and some focused uh, primarily about web services. Okay. So there's lots of this, the, 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 the majority of this, this talk is just pictures. So that's the level there. So I, I will attempt to explain via pictures how all of these things fit together. Um, one part of it which lists the sorts of things that we've been doing uh, is this picture. Uh, at the center is quick check. And we're tr the, 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 the space of property-based uh, testing, uh, in essence, it uses that and tries to augment it with various other things. Um, how to link tests and properties, how to estimate complexity, uh, developing a cloud testing framework, and, and so forth. And they sit around this ecosystem and allow you one to do interesting things or useful things uh, that you might wish to do. Okay, so the, the next part of this, I'm going to uh, uh, try and illustrate what we've done via a series of, of simple pictures that, that puts together, in a sense, a, 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 a system development says, what, what do you need to do, what do you want to do? So imagine we're starting off, we've got an implementation, uh, you want to test that, and you get some test results. Um, well, we've been interested in using Quick Check. You, I'm sure you all, all know the, the tool that it allows random test generation um, to generate the tests for this implementation. Uh, how does that work? Well, um, you write properties. You express properties in uh, Erlang, and on the basis of that, there's some random test generation. Uh, so it, it, in a sense, it's, it's a bit like model-based testing, but you're not writing a full model. You're writing particular axioms that you want to hold. Um, that's, that's all very well, but sometimes these properties are hard to understand, uh, hard to reason about, and so forth. So one thing we've done is uh, develop some tools to help us reason about properties. So uh, here's the first tool. So these slides will go through and illustrate with little pictures some of the tools that we've been um, developing. And the pointers I talked about, in fact, will be pointers uh, to organizational people where you can find out more information. 
Okay, so one of the tools we developed is ReadSpec, uh, and that allows you to understand properties and models as natural language. So it takes a property expressed in Erlang and then translates it to a, a, cuc a cucumber-like form uh, of natural language to, to express the, express the pop property. So that's one way that you can help uh, understand, help people understand what a property is. Um, the other way, I mean, properties are very abstract, they're perhaps mathematical. The other way you can help people is by representing a property as examples. Examples are wonderful ways of actually illustrating what's going on. Uh, so we have a tool called Good Examples, um, which helps you understand a, a property by generating some representative examples of it. Uh, so, so the, in a sense, it illustrates nicely uh, the property. So this is, again, another way in which one might help um, uh, a, native, a naive user of, of, of QuickCheck or somebody new to Airline to understand what's, what's going on. Okay. Um, feel free to stop and comment or questions as, as, you, as you wish. Uh, so... You, you might have a, a, a properties you, you've, you've expressed in a number of ways, you've understood those. Um, from, from a property, sometimes you want a, a specification, uh, and sometimes you want to understand how existing tests fit into that. Uh, and so we've developed a number of tools which use inference about the underlying system of the test to do further testing and to illustrate what's, what's going on. Uh, so one of these is called Synapse, and that helps you visualize a system as a finite state machine. So it takes the underlying uh, system, looks at what's going on, looks at the events, allow maybe on the basis of some testing, and then visualizes that as a finite state machine where you can see the states and the transitions between that. Another tool... Um, Targeted particularly towards web services is James, which again uh, is an inference tool. It's allowing you to infer models from from particular particular web services, and I'll say, I'll say a bit more about these later. Uh, then we've got uh, some tools specifically targeted towards the, the web services domain. Uh, so JSON Gen for generator mm, builds quick uh, quick check generators from the JSON JSON data. We've got WSDL, which uh, helps you express um, WSDL types as quick check generators. So it automatically translates some of the things to take out some of the, the tedious burden of writing all writing these, these wrappers. And finally, on, on the web services domain, there's WS Toolkit, which um, helps generate an Erlang interface to the underlying web service. And actually, in combination with the tool Wrangler, allows us to do some automatic generation of the, of the refactoring scripts. We've got a, an Erlang implementation of WebDriver for, for uh, user interface testing of, of different modes of, of running a, a web service. Um, so all of those, in a sense, uh, are, are living on the, the web services space. Okay, so let's let's go back again to that that original picture because I'm going to develop this picture in a number of number of different dimensions. Um, you've got quick check, you've got properties, you're testing the implementation. Um, Concurrent implementations are often uh, particularly hard to test, looking for data races and, and bugs which are to do with the inherent scheduling of the, the events. So uh, we've developed a tool called Pulse, which provides additional support for concurrency scheduling by providing a deterministic scheduler as, as part of how the, 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 the tests are generated. We've got a uh, support for fault injection by fault check, which combines uh, fault injection and property-based testing uh, to in it look to see how you can support robustly uh, some of the, the, the faults that m might occur. Now, this fault injection is getting on to it's entering the space of how to look to see how robust your testing process is uh, and there are two tools uh, that we've developed along these lines the, the first one is is mu2 which supports mutation testing 
which looks to see how good your test suite is by mutating the code and checking whether uh, you've caught any of these uh, new errors. And um, Smother, which helps measure test coverage, so it's uh, support for a particular type of coverage, MCDC coverage, uh, which is more powerful than line coverage, which is currently provided by, by cover. So these, both of these last two or three tools are about looking to see how good is your test suite, is it likely to cover everything you want, is it likely to catch errors if you make small perturbations um, in, in the code. Complexity check um, looks to try and identify some scalability issues in code by trying to generate some worst case behavior in terms of its counterexample so you can spot where you're likely to get worst case runtime behavior um, and um, also generate uh, empirically uh, an estimation of the actual complexity of the code without actually having to do some complexity analysis. Okay, going, going back to uh, this, this picture, uh, this is very nice and, and simple. You've got properties, you've got an implementation and tests, uh, but of course, real life isn't, isn't like this. You don't have one implementation, you don't have two implementations. In fact, you have several implementations. Um, uh, how, how do you compare those? Uh, how do you measure their differences? How do you rank them? Well, uh, as one of the things we've been looking at is how to um, measure that empirically and quanti quantitatively um, and developed a tool called Ranker, which compares different implementations, judging a, a whether they've passed the same tests, passed a subset of their tests, and whether there's a counterexample which, which demonstrates their, their difference. And this can visualize uh, a tree uh, of implementations to a, uh, a particular model. You need a quick check model to, to measure that against, and you can see where they lie uh, in comparison to each other and see which one's the top if there is a top, uh, which ones are lying further down in terms of the tests test passed. Okay, uh, and finally, Megaload is, is our support for cloud-based testing, allows you to run a number of phases with user profiles in to look at um, uh, how an implementation before performs under a uh, higher load than just one user in a, in a, in a lab-based scenario. Okay. So that, that's a run through of, uh, in a sense, the space that we've been trying to uh, inhabit, the, the, the tools that are lying in the, in the hut. Um, and uh, as, a, as a representative sort of sample of, of the sorts of uh, systems that, that one might be interested, we've, we've taken a number of case studies. Uh, here's one that we've, we've looked at. A, a, a some detail, so it's a vodka TV, which is a, it's the sort of setup you get in a hotel room, you go into the hotel room, you get a screen displaying your name, and you get a number of options. You can watch TV, you can play a game, you can plug into the internet, and, and, and so forth. Um, the, uh, there's a number of systems involved in that, you've got a set-top box, you've got components, you might have various tablets or PCs people have, have bought in, and they've got to work together. So you, you get architectures which look a bit like this. Um, what's the take-home message from this? Well, the take-home message is you've got a number of components, so components are going to be issued in that, communicating over APIs via different protocols and different means. Uh, okay, so you've got Java, you've got HTTP, uh, you've got Erlang, uh, you've got JSON, you've got XML, and, and, and so forth. Um, how on earth do you test something like that? Well, part of the tools we've been developing have been tested on this, uh, this actual system. This is a system in, in production, and we've used this to try and work out what's needed and refine some of the, some of the tools. Um, so the setup you typically get, you get parts of the middleware implemented in Erlang. Um, other parts, usually, as I said, using H, uh, HTML and JavaScript, uh, and various specific, maybe in-house protocols. Okay. Um, You've got different types of, of interactions, um, and these, in a sense, are typical for, for, for things which are developed in the in the web services like Mana. 
So what, what, what do the, how do the tools work on something like that? Um, what's the tool set we've developed? So just a, a little more, a slider piece uh, with some text on about each, each of those tools. Okay. Uh, so the first one, you can play spot the pointer on this one. So here's a clue. The pointer is down at the bottom. So my pointers are just pointers to people, or, um, the companies or organizations. If you want further details about anything we've developed, um, do, do get in, in contact. So as I said before a couple of times, QuickJecks are the center of our ecosystem, and it allows sort of controlled random test generation. It's not just random test generation, but you can control the weights uh, about the distribution of the data. Um, that's taken in, in, in testing. Um, and it does this from properties of interest. This is why we call it property-based testing. Um, so what does it provide? You've got combinators to define properties. You can observe the distribution of, of uh, test data, and you can define means to generate test data in appropriate ways. OK. so. One of the things I said we've um, uh, done is to look at using WS Toolkit. So how to combine that? There's an example of what we've done. How to combine WS Toolkit with Wrangler. Well, that's support for refactoring uh, in Erlang and, and, and Haskell before that to support evolution. So evolution of systems is any, any real system is going to um, never be static in that sense. So for example, what can you do using Wrang Wrangler? Uh, you can infer changes between your WSL descriptions and use these automatically generate refactoring scripts Okay, for how to change one model into the other. And it's, it's based upon calculating a specific distance uh, between uh, the, the, the base specifications. Okay, so the, the idea of this is trying to support um, uh, model evolution automatically as much as possible, do as much as the routine work uh, behind the scenes. Uh, Megaload uh, is our uh, load testing tool. Uh, so it does, it's, it's a cloud-based tool, does load testing a system, and it allows you to uh, generate some profiles, define some phases, uh, add users in to lo look at uh, the load and then also use the shrinking mechanism. There's a shrinking mechanism in, in QuickCheck that takes a very long counterexample to some property you want and shrinks it down to the minimum. So that's, again, a nice way of illustrating the hard part of what has got wrong. And you can use this in Megalode to um, apply shrinking to look at the minimal counterexamples in, in, in an effective way. OK. Um, so Synapse, Synapse and, and James are two ways. So that Synapse and James are living in that space up there. You've got some existing tests. What are you going to do with them? Can you use those existing tests, in a sense, the existing understanding of the behavior of the system to infer anything sensible or anything interesting from, from them? And both Synapse and James allow you to uh, infer models of, of some sort. Um, so it, from the models, you can then generate properties. You can get an understanding of the system. And you can also use the models to generate further tests from them. Uh, so both work in slightly different ways. James infers models from uh, unit tests written in JUnit. Uh, Synap infers uh, finite state machines. And I'll list, illustrate one of these in a, in a bit. Uh, and uses that to visualize the difference between some of these models. Um, so there's a pointer there. You spot the point at the bottom. Um, so Jenny unit tests essentially your instrument what's going on to track the combination of sort of control flow plus data uh, and extract that information to build up a representative model of, of your, your web service and again drive um, tests um, from that. That's, that's the architecture. Um, then that architecture generates a model. You can visualize that and then translate this model into QuickCheck. And then once you've got a QuickCheck model, you can traverse it in all sorts of different ways, allowing you to generate new tests. 
Okay, so through, in, in a sense, both of these tools work from representative data, generalize them in a way uh, that you can both visualize them and use it to, to drive more, more tests than you would have, um, than you had originally. So another example of this is uh, uh, Synapse. Synapse is actually an interface to ex an existing model inference tool called StateChum. That's actually a grammar inference tool. And it does two, there's two types of, uh, of inference you can do here. So passive inference, as the name implies, you, just, just, you sit and watch what happens. And then you just take that data and you try and build a model from seeing that. Active inference uh, then has a sort of control loop back in and allows you to say, mm, from this initial node of initialize, what happens if I do that? And you find out a bit more by interrogating the system slightly. Uh, and from this interrogation, uh, you build up a picture of how the system behaves, which in this case, you illustrate as a, a finite state machine, which is, um, well, I'll show you a picture on the, on the, on the next slide. Um, once you've got that, you, you can do two things. Um, one is you can just build a, a picture of the system so you can see what's going on, but also you can apply some differencing algorithms, some model differencing algorithms, to try and understand the difference between systems as, as, they, as they evolve. Um, and using the visualization, you can actually visualize that difference. So if I probably best explained if I show you this this picture. Um, so this picture is showing a number of things. Uh, firstly, it's showing you a finite state machine. So a finite state machine consists of states, a finite number of them, the, the clues in the name, uh, and transitions, uh, again, a finite number of those between the states which represent events in the system. Um, so here's, here's something from a frequency server example. You can see transitions to stop, allocate, and deallocate. Um, uh, frequencies are, are happening down here. So that's what a finite state machine looks like uh, overall, and you can uh, visualize that to get an understanding of the system. And then the model differencing allows you to say, take one system, another, might be a different implementation of the, of the same uh, standard, the same, same uh, API, and look at the differences, and we code that in different colors here. Uh, so you've got green and red uh, telling you what are new parts of the system in the green and which parts of the system now no longer a part of it. So the part in red has, has now disappeared. Um, and so this is a, a one, only one of a number of ways we've used visualizations in the project to help people get an understanding of what the system is doing underneath. Okay. So, in fact, Synapse and, 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 and James as well, they're, they're about inference, but they're also about um, understanding properties and models. Um, so, as I said before, one of the uh, tasks we're trying to do is make property-based testing accessible to users to, to smooth down the learning ramp, if you like, uh, for, for, for when you're faced with these new tools in the hut. Um, Synapse is one tool. Um, the others that I mentioned earlier, so read, spec, and good examples, are tools to help you understand properties. Um, so, uh, read, spec, helps you understand the models by taking um, the specification in Erlang and translating it into a natural language format. Um, and good examples uh, is, is properties by example, if you like. Um, so here's, here's a little example at the, the, the bottom. Um, simply QC contains property test the delete operation of the list module. So you might have something like that in the, in the, in the blue in the top, um, a simple property for all i in, in, in over a list. Uh, is it not the case that blah, blah, blah? So you're testing to see whether the delete operation has successfully occurred. Um, and you can translate that automatically into a cucumber-like operation uh, that, uh, in a sense, demystifies some of, of what's embedded in mathematically in the property. Trivial if you understand the property and what's going on. If you're new to it, it's a way to get a bit of an English grasp, a natural language grasp of, of what's going on. 
Okay, so that's one way translating in English. I can help you understand a property. The other way, it's by uh, viewing a property as a, uh, a set of unit tests. Um, so you know, there's there's a there's a slight tension going on on here. Properties are great, very very general, powerful. That's really what I want to like want to write down. But unit tests uh, are much easier to understand. So we're trying to traverse that axis, if you like. Um, so you take it, take one. Um, property, you generalize it, uh, to take, take a property, you, you get one test case out of it, take that example, generalize it, and generate a number of different test cases based upon that to help people illustrate different aspects of it. And of course, that doesn't measure the whole space of the property, otherwise you, you wouldn't have needed a property to start with uh, if it was just a set of examples, but it's about illustrating things and illustrating and understanding. Okay. Um, then... As I mentioned before, there's specific support for uh, web services, uh, for taking web services written in, in different formats, generating uh, components needed by QuickCheck in order to do the testing. So um, JSON Gen takes a library generating QuickCheck generators from JSON data, from written in JSON schemas, uh, and then actually using that with a model to, to actually automatically explore uh, the, the web service. Um, uh, we've got a domain-specific language, uh, which allows you to, to reuse the syntax to, to in a sense, to take out some of the burden uh, of writing out uh, the WSD types by automatically generating them. The, the quick check generators. So those are where those sit in terms of the pictures. Um, just slip through that. Uh, so going back to that overall system, um, we've got a number of different tools and they're trying to attack different parts of, in a sense, the problem space. So part of what we've got is about scaling. Um, so we saw in the original picture of the Vodka TV, there's actually not one system that you want to test there. There's a whole load of components. Now, it would be really nice not to have to write one property which expresses everything, does all the calls between the so and forth, partly because that property would be too complex to write down, and secondly, you'd get it wrong. Um, so what we're trying to do is offer some support for scaling property-based testing based upon the division of, uh, of a system into components. Uh, so we're using components instead of a single model and a way to combine properties written in individual components uh, using uh, abstract descriptions of, of callouts into a single model. Um, there's a library for mocking the behavior, so you don't have to write out the behavior of that underlying thing there, you just write a mock of what it might do, give some representative uh, values to return for the data. Um, and these can then sort of be clustered together to get an overall um, uh, system you can check by property-based testing without doing the, the individual ones. Um, as part of the scaling, um, we've developed a, a, a neat tool called uh, more bugs. So uh, quick check is great. It's great in the small scale. If you you run it, you find a bug, you've got a counter example. Um, they'll even give you about the smallest counter example. So what do you go do? Well, you go away, you fix it, okay, fix the bug, and then you test again. And you find another bug, and you go back and do that again. Now, that, that kind of gets laborious and, and sometimes you get into a bit of a, a self-defeating loop there. What would be really nice is if you can find essentially all the bugs at once. Um, partly because they might be about round about the same problem, partly because you want an overview of what's gone wrong, and then go and fix it. Well, there's a tool called More Bugs which does that. So it allows you to find all, and all's in inverted commas because it's, it's, it's uh, uh, almost all at once, what it does, it finds the bugs, it generalizes that bug to try and cap more, more, capture more of the, um, uh, of the similar bugs, and then modifies the generator in Quick Check to avoid that particular bug in the first place. Uh, and, and, and that allows you to find more uh, initially than you, than you would otherwise. So that, that allows you to um, scale up 
the process of using Quick Check. Uh, one thing we find using Quick Check, you're you're writing these these properties, uh, specifications. Um, if you're writing them just in Erlang, again, there's a, there's a there's a learning barrier about about uh, using that, and sometimes pictures provide a much better understanding, a visualization of what's uh, gone on. Uh, and so we provided support for not just graphical representation of um, the underlying system, but for graphical editing of the quick check models. Uh, so here, here's an example of that. Um, you might start off with a, s a very simple specification that you're trying to generate tests from. Uh, that's, on th that's the one on the left-hand side. Um, well, it really is a bit simple. There's just one node in it, and you loop back around, and, and you realize quickly that actually your system isn't that simple. Instead of going back and rewriting some Erlang, it'd be nice to be able to edit that graphically. Well, you can now. Uh, there's now a front end that allows you to pull off that init node from another one started, add the two transitions where they are to the picture on the right. And it automatically, uh, in, in the back, uh, generates uh, the underlying quick check model that uh, represents that. So you can do this all in, in, a, in a nice editor now. Okay, so that's that. You, we, we've set you up nicely. Um, you've, you've generated some tests. You can graphically edit. You've got property uh, component-based testing divided into components. You've got lots of test suites, and you want to know how good those test suites are. Um, so we've provided some uh, tools um, for mutation testing and coverage, which help you, in a sense, validate the quality of your your test suites. Uh, so Smothers is a tool that's used to uh, assess MCDC coverage. So MCDC coverage is a coverage that checks not just every line is covered in your code, um, but every combination of values of decision points you might make in your code is also covered. Um, there's, a, there's a screenshot on, on the right-hand side of how that works. Uh, the issues come because you can cover every line without actually covered all the combination of things uh, you should do, and that's represented by different, you can see at the top there, different colors of, of green and, and orange and red, telling you how much you've covered of the portion of your, of your decision tree, uh, and giving you a percentage of whether you've, how much you've matched it or not. Um, and so that can be that can be used in in, in the same way as, as coverage cover does, uh, and gives you slightly more information, a well, lot more information about what you've what you've covered. Um, so that's one way to look at um, how good your test suite is. You clearly want a decent coverage of your code. Uh, the other thing you can do in the in the testing domain is do something called uh, mutation testing. So mutation testing says, well, I've got some tests. I've got a, a whole test suite here. Supposing I make some very small changes to my code, have your existing tests, and these changes by definition errors, have your existing tests, can they actually capture the fact that your code is changed? Okay, And that's, that's the subject known as mutation testing. You perform small mutants on your code base, on your code, and there's, we have a tool to do that, that's what the tool does. Um, and you can automate uh, that to do it randomly, or you can pick ones you might want to mutate uh, specifically yourself. And then you can measure whether your exist existing um, test suite kills the mutants, as that's the, the terminology. Uh, and that tells you whether it's, it's stable under small changes. OK. And then, then um, finally, on to. Uh, Fault injection, there's a, 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 a tool, fault injection, uh, fault check for, for C code, which combines fault injection and, and property-based uh, testing using quick check, quick check uh, to, to, to drive it. Okay, So all of those are, in a sense, in, uh, things which sit around uh, uh, quick check. Uh, Cubic has also developed 
support for continuous integration. So the issue there is uh, you've got some test suite, you've got some code, you might want to some repository where your code is, is stored, you might want to check in your code. What would be really nice is if your tool, uh, your, your testing tool then runs the same tests again um, in the background automatically and tells you which of uh, those are passed or not, and that's known as continuous inter integration. So there's a, a, a specific product, Quick Check CI, uh, which does this now. Uh, it's a server that runs Q, uh, Quick Check on a project, uh, and open source developers can use this. This is uh, free, for, free for use, um, and uh, it runs the full version of Quick Check, but it's in, in the background as long as it's logged for, for, for open source. Okay, so that's 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 really nice. Uh, so how do these all fit in in terms of what we're trying to? There's lots of different tools. What are the different themes in my in my hut? Uh, well, one of the themes is about scalability. As I said, we're trying to give you specific support for components uh, and mocking. Uh, there's other support for accessibility, uh, trying to help people understand uh, properties uh, by examples, by, by illustration. Uh, there's been specific support for, for web services um, and support for, if you like, discovering properties or discovering tests from existing one tools like um, James and Synapse uh, and uh, also support for improving your testing, checking the quality of your testing suite, and finally support for evolution um, through Ranker, uh, WS Toolkit, and, and, and Wrangler. Okay, so that was it. That was a brief uh, prowess on speed, those of you um, who want your afternoon drug. Uh, so acknowledgements, it really is a, a combination of all our efforts and support from EU um, framework 7 is gratefully acknowledged. And that's it. Henry doesn't have to go 10 and 5 and have saved him. I actually went 10. But, uh, so we've got plenty of time for questions. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to ask if, uh, is it all like productized? Uh, uh, is it also what? Is it is it a kind of product I may download somewhere and read and read me and hello world examples, or is it a more like research project and I'm supposed to uh, assemble it myself from a couple of detached projects, some of them commercial, some of them research projects. <laughs> It, it, it's a continuum of tools, some of which are commercial and some of which more sit at the research end. Uh, it, it's not one overall package. We, d we didn't believe in providing one overall um, property development framework that you have to use, but rather there's a lightweight integration command line where you can, where you can call tools from. Um, they are standalone. Uh, some of them use the others in the background, but they're standalone, so you can go to the website, look at the tools, download the specific ones. Some are free and open source, and some are commercial. I don't know if that answers the, 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 the question. So th there's, a, there's a gradation, like all of these things, between um, where they sit. Some are commercially developed, used by users around the world, and some are, are, are newer. Any more questions? Can you please uh, elaborate a little bit more on the actual technologies used? What's, what's behind those tools? Uh, th there's the, I mean, there's a variety of different things. Um, Quick Check's a commercial tool um, by Qvic. Other tools have been uh, written in Erlang as, as open source. Um, so there's a whole variety of the whole variety of things. Some use other components. So the mutation testing uses the Wrangler in the in the background. Um, but there's a whole whole variety. Many of them written from 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 scratch within the project. Well, then I suggest we thank John.